everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna to be doing some beautiful love messages for you guys. So thank you so much for being patient with me uploading. We're gonna get straight on into it. So we have four groups for you guys for your love messages. This is gonna be messages for those of you who are mainly single as that's kind of where my readings tend to go. But if you are in a relationship and it resonates with you, then that is absolutely perfect. So let's get started with today's reading. So we have four groups here. We have a group number one with the rose quartz, group two with the clear quartz, group three with the amethyst and group four with the tourmalated quartz. So let's get started. Start for group number one with the rose quartz. Hello group number one, let's get started with your reading. So we're gonna first start off with the beautiful uh, tarot. You guys chose this rose quartz double terminated crystal. I, I'm, I'm obsessed with double terminated crystals. I think they're amazing because they look like diamonds. So I'm just obsessed. Okay, so the fact that you guys chose rose quartz means to me that you guys are really in your heart energy at the moment. You guys have really been focused on relationships, possibly healing, some old connections, kind of, feed i'm hearing feeding the past so like feeding your connection with the past and your connection to your past relationships and how they've really affected you and things like that it just feels like an overall past love connection type thing going on type vibe so let's have a look and see what's going on for you guys so tarot first so i chose a king um as well as the other cards as well so we have a king and then we also have one of the general cards in the deck that doesn't does not associate with tarot uh, like the original tarot deck so we have the king of pentacles for you guys okay so i'm going to um pull a couple of the tarot cards for you guys but this is really really interesting i do feel like a lot of you guys have kind of chosen in the past to you, you want a relationship, but you're kind of avoiding the intimacy without kind of realizing. So I'm feeling for a lot of you guys, you've kind of been drawn to people that have been very kind of emotionless. And I just, I literally just thought I saw a grasshopper. That is so weird. So that, cause that's gonna be your omen for today's video. I literally thought I had a grasshopper in my uh, tarot room. So that's okay. So um, for you guys, you're really needing to focus on your intimacy or you are focusing on your intimacy now. So we have the lovers, we have the king of pentacles and the moon child. So the fact that you guys got the king of pentacles means that you guys are reading to create structure in your love life. So when I say love life, I don't just mean romantic. Your love life is you. Like without anyone, you're still in your love life because you're loving your life. So, or you're like including love in your life because you are, you know, love. So I do feel like it's really, really important to keep bringing in love, whether you're single, you're in a relationship, whatever. Like it's really, really important for you to love and enjoy your life. Like that's kind of why we're here. So it's really, really important for you to end any old cycles that need to be closed out. And I do feel like a lot of you guys, I am filming this in the new year and it does kind of give me that new year kind of vibe. Obviously this is timeless, so just take it as it resonates. But the 10 of cups is showing me there's a massive completion that has literally just happened and you're ready to start something new. Those of you who are single, good knows, I do feel like a lot of you guys are interested and wanting a relationship and it's gonna come in for you guys. I do feel like that's what you're attracting. So the moon child is basically saying your emotions are the most important thing and I need to cough. <coughs> so that's definitely your heart chakra opening because that came right from my chest area and the heart chakra is all about, you know, love and your moon and everything like that. So I'm hearing how are you processing your emotions? That is kind of the main thing of what we need to focus on. So I do feel like the main message around love for you guys is the more you feel safe, the better the relationship with yourself, with others, with how you interact with your world. Creating safety is super, 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 super important. So the moon child is all about your emotional side, the uh, the way you love, the way you appreciate things, what you appreciate, how you appreciate things like that. So I do feel like your main kind of like quote unquote task in your love life right now, like your focus, I feel like focus is a better word actually. Your focus is to really kind of chime in on your moon sign. So your moon sign is your, like I said, your emotional side and things like that. This is gonna create your safety. So the more you make your moon sign feel safe, the better your love life because you're not going into any relationship through trauma or rushing into it or something like that. I'm hearing the lyrics rushing in. I don't know what song this is, but I'm hearing rushing in. 
So I do feel as if you guys are more of the watery type. You're kind of the sort of person that's very sensitive. You might take on people's emotions really easily. So having a solid foundation within your body, within your emotional nervous system is really, really super important because it allows you to kind of make decisions consciously rather than unconsciously. So I do feel as if there is a massive change in your love life like romantic life in terms, I'm just going to call it your romantic life. It's going to get com complicated. So romantic love life, that, that area, it's really, really important for you to focus on yourself all the time, whether you're in a relationship or you are single, just because for those of you who are single, just because you're not in a relationship doesn't mean you're any less valuable. Like society really has this thing about people being single and it just being like the worst thing in the world. The whole reason is because it plays on our tribal uh, past because a lot of us, you know, we came from tribes, you know, most likely my, all of us came from tribes of some kind at some point. And a tribe is, is part of having a partner makes us feel like we're in a tribe when we have a relationship. So when we don't have a relationship, it does feel like something's missing. But the best thing for you to do right now is while you're single is to focus on what you really want out of a partner. I do feel like also is you're going to establish really strong friendships before you manifest a partner. Um, I do feel like it's really important to establish the same sex uh, relationship. So even if you are attracted to same sex romantically, having same sex friends is really important as well. Even, even more important, I guess, if you do want a same sex relationship because it's getting you used to um, kind of having that partnership around, but without, you know, the intimacy. So I do feel like, especially for my girls and my gals out there, like you guys need to focus on working on your feminine side by basically putting your feminine power to play. And I'm picking up like a really strong, like sexual expression, like really expressing yourself, um, sexually. And this can be, I'm hearing revealing, like being more revealing. Uh, it could be more revealing of your body, revealing emotionally, um, there's a sense of like letting yourself be more revealing to people around you. Like even if it's like even family, it's like wearing something that maybe your family might comment on it or something. It's like not letting the opinions of others take away your power. That's basically what I'm getting at here. There's so many different like chunky blo blotchy messages in this group. It's like blah, blah, blah. I feel like it's all over the place but hopefully something resonates with you guys here. So I'm seeing a massive cycle being completed. I'm hearing um, narcissism cycle completed, especially with women. Um, actually, let me rephrase that, especially with same sex friendships and relationships. So if you guys have had, uh, as a woman, if you've had really uncomfortable relationships, like, sorry, friendships with women, they are coming to an end, like in terms of like toxic ones. Uh, for my guys, you are going to have a stronger connection with other guys and not to be like manipulated by them. So I'm picking up the, for my women, you guys are really coming to a comfortable place in your feminine side, males, masculine side. Um, and obviously not every male is masculine, not every female is feminine, but everyone has that side to them. So it's basically your fit, your feminine, okay, your same sex friends, whether you're female or male, they contribute to your masculine and feminine side and I feel like for those of you especially my women out there you guys have definitely had a lot of uncomfortable feminine relationships like female to female connections it's been a lot of like narcissism a lot of like raw cattiness and I feel like for a lot of you guys there's definitely a splitting apart of the karma now like the karma is now it's done like a lot of you guys have been working on this for a very long time especially around your feminine power um, and same like for my guys, you guys are really working on your masculine side and making sure that when you are in when when you are in friendships with other guys, is you're not kind of losing yourself or trying to like get one up on each other. It's kind of like very kind of stereotypical masculine feminine energy. So females, if they're if feminines are unbalanced, um, it can be like gossiping, cattiness, selfishness. Um, jealousy and then with men it can be like um narcissism and uh, com competitions and, and kind of like joking but like in a really childish way so you're letting go of all of that uncomfortable crappy stuff that just needs to go like bye bye see you later so you're the kind of like the main element of you, you're the main element of your life like you're in the driver's seat so remember if anyone is taking you for a ride 
and not in a good way. <laughs> They're here for a ride, then they need to go. Uh, bye bye. Um, so also the lovers, basically saying for those of you who are single, you can expect to have a very strong connection, but it will come with you looking at your past. If you guys feel like you still have a little bit of like past energy that's lingering, there is still a sense of you need to work on it. Um, this being to look at yourself and how you've chosen these people in your life, why you've chosen them and why they keep popping back up. And a lot of it is to do with our past trauma around our family, especially to do with our parental figures that were in our life when we were younger. That basically shapes our entire life, unfortunately. Uh, but that's kind of how it works. So let's get you some general cards and then we're gonna have a look into the astrology. Okay, we have whale. Tenderness, show compassion and forgive what needs to be forgiven. Do what, yeah, let's get three, okay. Ooh, stepping into your power. That is exactly what I was feeling for you guys. So much. I'm picking up like my tear ducts. Like my tear ducts is like, um, I've got like a twitch in my tear duct. Um, this is kind of showing me for a lot of you guys, you might be feeling really teary and really um, upset about something. And this is just saying like, this is completely normal. Don't shame yourself for crying or feeling upset. Um, this is really about, yeah, this is really about your growth and how it's just, it's really coming to a head. It's gonna be a little bit intense for a while, but I don't see it kind of being too uncomfortable where you can't handle it. Okay, so for a lot of you guys, because that King of Pentacles came up, I get from the King of Pentacles this time around where it's like unemotional, people who are unemotional. And for a lot of you guys, if you have kind of been in a place where you can't ask for help, you're too independent to the point where, you know, you can't rely on people, you can't trust people, this is your sign to ask for help, to seek support. And it can be even like having a therapist, going to um, a gym session where you have a fitness trainer, like it's listening to somebody else's advice. Um, I'm hearing for a change. <laughs> that sounds really like dodgy to say, but honestly guys, it is really about like, letting people take the reins for once. A lot of you guys really don't, really struggle to rely on other people for help. So it could even be like surrendering, basically to surrender to somebody else helping you and letting them kind of take the lead. Okay, so the great gathering, it's all coming together, intuitive hits and soul tribe, beautiful. So when you manifest a partner, you're gonna kind of feel, you're just gonna feel really whole and complete, not because there's another person around you, but because you've done the work before you've met them. Um, so in terms of the sort of partner you're going to have, it's going to be after a transformation of yourself. It's really about, like I said, the relationship with your same sex friends. That's going to be how you kind of change your love life because you're now going to expect more from your friendships. You're not going to just deal with whatever breadcrumbs are kind of given to you. So the best advice for right now is just be really, really comfortable with showing compassion to yourself, forgiving the past, forgiving others and how they've kind of hurt you and realizing that things are really changing at a deep cellular level. So not everything's gonna be super comfortable right now. By picking up in about three to five months, there is gonna be some nice big shifts um, and you're gonna notice some new people around you at that time. Um, we have Sisterhood of the Rose, Beauty and Devotion, Priestess, Mystic Teacher. You are one of the people in your groups or in your life who you feel like, basically I'm hearing take your own advice. Like you guys are the people who, like people look up to you. I don't think you people, okay, what am I saying? <laughs> My words are all over the place. I feel like people, no, I feel like you don't realize that people look up to you. There we go, we got there in the end. Like it's this kind of feeling of, you have a lot of wisdom to give and you don't realize how like how important that is. And you're always kind of the person in the group who has a lot of advice, but a lot of it goes to waste because you're not expressing it. So for you, you're gonna be the mystic, the teacher in your group of friends. Like you're gonna be the one who is helping all the guys or the gals out. And I definitely feel like I'm picking up like a, in a, there's like a month in between meeting a group of people who are the same, uh, same gender as you and then a month and then you meet your partner. So it's this kind of like clicking into gear, some sort of massive karmic shift to do with friends. That's kind of what I'm feeling. And it's because you have um, stepped into your power. A lot of people love what you do. Like they're gonna love, you're gonna be really fascinated about your career. Um, so like your friends are gonna be really supportive of you in your career. There's no jealousy, there's nothing like that. It's gonna be like a really beautiful connection. So you can expect a lot of support. And it's really interesting because it's like you don't need it, you don't actually need the support, but it's like because you've really worked on yourself and you're relying on yourself now, you're no longer kind of waiting around for somebody else. 
you are so much more happier because whether the outcome of the friendship is good or bad, it's like, it doesn't really matter. It's like, you can handle yourself. All right, beautiful South Node past. That makes me very happy because everything about this reading is all about to do with the past. So that's really, really, really interesting. <clears throat> Fifth house passion, 12th house introspection. I'm picking up on a really strong connection with a masculine, um, like really letting go of the connection to the father figure that you've had in your life um, and how they've controlled and manipulated you. Especially for those of you who want a male as a partner, like this is really, really important. Um, it's all about your self-esteem and your confidence. For those of you who are um, straight men, I do feel as if you guys are still healing that exact same connection. It's like, but it's it's hitting you in a way where it's your own self-esteem because it's like, because your father figure represents your masculine side. Um, that makes sense. So we don't have conjunction alliance. There's definitely this sense of like wanting some tribal energy around you. So that's definitely something you're going to attract. Okay, so in terms of the astrology cards, this could be somebody that you're going to attract. The Taurus is lovely, really, really earthy, someone who's creative, someone who goes interest, who's introspective, someone who, I think that's a word, um, someone who looks into themselves a lot, really, really kind of like, not, I'll say a passive person, but they're not somebody who's aggressive, like they're somebody who um, they really care about other people, they're always thinking about other people, very empathic. So this person also, you and this person have gone through a lot and when you manifest this person, you're going to be really clear on your boundaries, which is really nice. Like you're going to basically, you're going to show up so authentically. So it's going to be so pretty. Like the energy is really pretty. It's really hard to explain, but it's like, you know, when you see a couple and they're just so suited for each other, there's no kind of trauma. There's no crap being like bounced around in conversation. There's just genuine love. This is that connection. And it's because you've done the inner you know searching and discoveries and things like that i hate the word work i hate the i try to stop myself from saying inner work because i say it so much on this channel so the taurus energy is lovely so it could be you're in your second house birth year if you don't know your second house birth year um check out but i think it's like a birth year calculator or something every year you go for a birth year so if you guys are in your second house birth year that could be an indication that your love life's going to change it could be if you have any taurus placements um, also, if you are trying to regain balance in your life to the point where you feel more stable, that could also be a sign as well. Um, the fifth house is all about Leo. So you could attract a Leo, a Pisces, a Taurus. Um, the south node in Taurus is really interesting because of the north nodes in Taurus at the moment. If the south nodes in Taurus, the north node <clears throat> will be in Scorpio. So you guys are... <clears throat> sorry guys my throat chakra hey um the north node will be in scorpio so basically you are aiming to address things head on and transform your love life like pretty quickly um the more you go into your passions the quicker your love life will quicker your romantic life will really change and you're going to attract some really lovely people who also have a lot of passion and the person you could meet could be an artist a musician could be like like a, a painting artist or a music music artist um some yeah some sort of artist or someone who's really into like helping people around mental health or beauty or something to like help people with creativity in a way that you know is obviously creative like art or something like that um yeah really really beautiful so thank you so much for watching guys if you would like to purchase a private reading all that information is down below um and if you'd like to check out my crystal shop i've got some really gorgeous crystals at the moment i do sell these rings and yeah i've got some beautiful pieces on there so check it out have a lovely day and i'll speak to you soon bye okay group number one before i finish off your reading i was drawn to pick a couple of months of the year for you just for any kind of timing so we have a march and yeah, let's get another one I'm picking up the month of the witches. So like, I mean, I'd say that's probably October for Halloween. So uh, that could also be a month for you as well. So we have March and August and October. So have a lovely day and I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Hello, group number two. Let's get started with your reading. So you guys chose the clear quartz, which is really, really nice. I'm picking up maturity, like the word mature. So I feel as if a lot of you guys are not going to have just a intimate connection with somebody. The main message is you're doing a really, really, really good job. Like a lot of you guys are 
very, very sexual people. You do want to have a physical connection. I mean, we all deserve that. You know, being a physical being, we do deserve that. For you guys, it's like, I'm hearing you've done a lot of work on your sacral chakra or around the area of intimacy. Could be emotional intimacy too, but it feels more like physical intimacy. Um, whether it be getting closer to who you are, understanding your identity, understanding your worth, these things are so effing important because it's like if you don't know yourself, intimate life can be so complicated and, and like just annoyingly complicated because it's almost like you can never get an answer. So something that you've been really doing is getting really responsible around who you let touch you essentially or who you let in your life, who you let around you. And I also feel like you guys are, yeah, you're not like just doing stuff with random people anymore. Not that I'm against that at all. I don't see a problem with that at all. But for you guys, you're being very comfortable with the idea of just having one intimate partner when the time is right. Obviously for my singles. For those of you actually, I'm getting a message for those of you in relationships that your intimate life may change quite soon. It's like you want more or you want it a different way. A lot of you guys, if, you're, if one of the partners, either you or your partner is in therapy, one of you guys is going to open up suddenly, all of a sudden, and want possibly to express yourself more intimately. So maybe in different types of ways, I'm not gonna say, but like different kinks, let's just say. Um, and yeah, there's self-discovery, which is really, really nice. And if both of you are in therapy, that's great. Um, but I don't see it being like a group, like a relationship therapist or anything. I mean it like just one singular person talking to one singular person in therapy. Okay, so <clears throat> let's have a look and see what's going on. We have the Nine of Pentacles, the King of Swords and the Divine Wisdom. That is why my throat chakra is acting up because we have the um, air, which is really all about communication. So with the King of Swords, every group got a king and for you guys, you've got a King of Swords. So this is really important because it's all about how the F are you communicating? Are you communicating nicely to yourself? Is there a lot of judgment? Is there a lot of perfectionism? This is super, super important because if you are talking to yourself in a, in a bashing kind of uncomfortable way, you are self-sabotaging your own life essentially. So something that's really important is to get super clear on how you're expressing yourself. And what's really, really important about this group is your passions. And anytime you feel like your passions are muted by someone, then do not listen to those people because you do not deserve that. You deserve someone who really appreciates you and takes your passions and your dreams seriously. So the next person you're gonna meet, if you are single, I do feel like fully, fully, fully supports your dreams, your aspirations, everything. The person you're gonna meet also is really driven. They like to work. And even if there isn't money about, oh, my ear is ringing. Hi, my left ear is ringing. I just went deaf in my right ear and my left ear is ringing. I love that. I just picked up on um, Morganite and Pink Opal for you guys as well as a crystal. So if you guys want a crystal recommendation, then that is that. Um, I also feel like, what was I gonna say? Can you tell me what I was gonna say? Passion, okay, beautiful. So a lot of you guys are gonna pick up some new passions and it's gonna lead you towards a partner because it's like you both have the same interest. It's also bringing you towards a partner because you're enjoying your life a lot more because you're exploring this side of you. A lot of you guys are, or have been teased about a certain hobby that you do, whether it be something really spiritual, whether it be say you're doing, you're like a, a, a male, like gender, like, like biological male, and you're doing something more feminine or you're a feminine doing a male job or something like that, like, you know, obviously sexist, but basically you've been teased about a certain career or hobby that you wanna do and you've always been like avoiding it. This is what I'm, this is your chance. This is your like kind of, you know, sign to do what you really want to do because you have a lot of wisdom especially around like i'm picking up on like gardening and things to do with flowers you guys are really connected to that so if you ever feel drawn to that in your life i'd say really pursue it like it doesn't have to be gardening it can be working with like flowers like a florist or working with botanicals or self-care like um like moisturizers and kind of like beauty objects to do with like flowers there's something there because you're really connected to the earth so we then have the Seven of Pentacles, which is a massive heart chakra opening. And then we have the Five of Pentacles in the reverse. Yes, I love that. When, it's, when the Five of Pentacles in reverse, I'm like, yes, bye bitch, no one cares about you. <laughs> the number five in the tarot is not the most comfortable. It's kind of like in the middle. So a lot of you guys are now coming away from any relationship that does not serve you. So this is you being very, very comfortable with who is in your life. So if anyone's not in your 
if anyone's in your sphere that you're not comfortable with, I'm seeing them just going like naturally or just, I'm hearing like the relationship has expired. And for a lot of you guys, you're not around anyone toxic anymore. Um, you may have a couple of people who, you know, you can't really change the relationship right now because you live with them or their family or whatever. Like you do have choice, but obviously just, just you know, you take it as the um, the connection goes and what, you're, what you can actually do in that moment. I'm seeing a lot of you guys are naturally just expressing yourself, which is really nice. And it's helping you to just become more happy with yourself, being more happy being single, or if you're in a relationship where you spend time alone, you don't feel like you're obsessing over your partner or you know, you're able to be by yourself. So what I'm seeing in the future is there's a massive sense of stability and maturity. A lot of you guys who've never moved out, when you actually do move out, oh my God, you're gonna be a completely different person. Whether you're gonna move out, move out with another person, a friend or a partner, you guys just feel so ready for maturity and I'm hearing single life. Even if, even if you're dating like somebody at the time, which I see a lot of you guys doing, if you are wanting to move out, by the time you move out, you might actually be with somebody or dating somebody, um, not officially in a partnership. I'm just seeing like there's this massive like independence that you guys are having. I'm hearing the word Independence Day, which I'm not saying is to do with the film. It's just is hearing like, I'm hearing like you celebrating your independence, which is so nice. And it feels really good. Like your partner, when you are, like if you're single, you're attracting a partner who just looks at you like in awe because they see how mature and capable you are. They're like, whoa, like where did you get your confidence from, girl? Like, <laughs> can I have some of that? Like They look at you like, whoa, they have their shit together and that's what makes you so attractive, you know? And even if you don't feel like you have your shit together, like you just are so okay with being by yourself. Like it doesn't really matter. So the sort of relationship that you're dealing with right now is all about communication. Like I said, how you're communicating with others, how you're getting your point across, how you're getting your ideas across, things like that. And there's definitely this royal maturity that you have about yourself. Like a lot of people look at you like, whoa, she is mature. There might be a bit of jealousy running around as well, especially with people you live with, family, friends, who are close to you. There might be an underlying sense of, of uh, jealousy and immaturity on their part because they can see how much you're growing. It's almost like they're jealous of that. Um, they kind of want to bring you down. So anyone who, who tries to do that and you're kind of sensing, oh, this, this feels like jealousy, but I'm not sure. I would say it probably is jealousy, especially if you're doing a lot of um, growing up, which is great. So I'm being, being drawn to this divine wisdom of the Nine of Pentacles. So the divine wisdom is all about you guys just seeing yourself. Um, it's like being more clearer about what your intentions are. And also I'm hearing you need to communicate what your needs are in relationships. So if you come into a partnership and you're single and this is like a new person, if ever you feel like there's a red flag, it probably is a red flag <laughs> because a lot of the time when we don't realize red flags, you know, it's because, you know, we're not meant to realize them. I feel like a lot of you guys are not going to actually experience a lot of red flags anymore, um, especially if you have, you know, done the emotional discovery. It's like you don't, you're not gonna actually come across a lot of narcissists anymore, which you can be very, very happy about, because yay, <laughs> we don't want that anymore. Um, yeah, okay. So let's get you some um, cards in terms of any messages, any advice for group number two, beautiful. A lot of you guys wanna rush, 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 rush. Like, Vicky, where's my partner? Why hasn't he or she arrived yet? Why haven't they come into my life yet? Girl, change this for me. Girl, it's divine timing, okay? <laughs> I'm not in control. And that's actually quite a good thing to say to yourself. I'm not in control. Or I am in control. I am in control. What I can basically change myself. Okay, so we have... This actually is in the same position as group number two. So that's really cool. So there's obviously a lot of you guys needing to um, ask for help at the moment. So we have trust, approach the situation with a light heart, divine timing, good, thing come, good things come to those who wait. Leaf cutter and army of life, ask for help, seek support, you are not alone. Kundalini rising, beautiful. This is a sexual energy I was talking about. <clears throat> not being scared of it as well. Especially those of you who want to do a creative job. <clears throat> Sorry guys, my throat shark was really acting up. <clears throat> Channel your creative passion and sensuality. Welcome the transformation. Yas queen, I love that, that is beautiful. I actually coughed so hard earlier, I actually blew my candle out. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay, let's see. Answer the call. What is your soul calling you to do? Oh, that gives me so much like, this I almost felt like a blanket of love just came over me as I read that. <clears throat> wow, I'm sorry, God, my throat shock is really acting up today. 
you go first, the universe will catch you. I feel like you're going to have some supportive friends that are going to help you with this. Yes, just say yes. Woohoo. Okay, so this is all about you getting your power back. And I also feel like if you have somebody in your life or somebody comes across in your life soon um, who is possibly someone you could date, I'm hearing just say yes to it. Like, obviously, if you feel like it's right, if you feel like it's more rights than wrongs, then go for it. Because I feel like it's just the right timing for you, and especially because you have divine timing. You guys, I'm hearing just let the let the timing do its work. Let your life just guide you to a person. And don't worry about, you know, being single or being like, oh, my love life sucks. I have no one around. Like, I'm hearing who cares? Like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter if you don't have anyone around you. Not to say I don't care about you being single, but it's not to judge yourself. I'm picking up on like a judgy energy that you're judging yourself that you don't have a partner. It doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter if you don't have a partner right now. Like, it doesn't, that doesn't make your life better. It just, it's just another soul coming into your life, you know? And if you're not happy, you won't be happy with somebody else, trust me. So what is your soul calling you to do? A lot of you guys need to leap into something that's a little bit out of your comfort zone. It feels as if, for some of you guys, I'm just going to be really blunt, like for some of you guys, if you're wanting to date a different gender that you've never dated before, I'd say go for it. Like this is just a massive confirmation. If, you, if you're if you getting the drive to uh, maybe date, you know, a gender that you haven't dated yet, then I'd say fucking go for it. Of course, there's a very specific message and that's for some of you. For others of you, this is all about you guys really living your purpose. Like if there's people around you who constantly belittle you or there's a lot of narcissistic energy around you, this is really about you like not giving a shit, like really just focusing and pointing back to you, like not worrying about, oh, they think this about me, they think that about me. It's like, who cares? Like it's about you and how you're living your life. Like people will sort themselves out. If people are dedicated to making your life a misery then they are miserable people basically so a lot of you guys could be getting back issues or eye issues um, my hand is on my back I don't know why but I'm like leaning my hand on my back right now um my hands just do whatever when I'm channeling so I just let them you know do whatever um so a lot of you guys are, are leaning into something like you're learning to lean instead of like worry shove stuff under the rug like you're learning to lean into any worries you have around relationships like if you're in a connection with a friend or somebody who just it's constantly trying to make you feel bad. Lean into it. What's it trying to teach you? If you don't feel like you want to, you know, let that person go out of your life, what is this teaching you? You know, and a lot of it is to do with being assertive, okay? And the tiger doesn't really give a shit about other people. He just wants to, you know, get his food, be the predator and, you know, live live their life, live, live its life. You know, it doesn't, a tiger doesn't care about what other people think of it. And same with flowers. Like, they just bloom wherever. They just don't really care. So that's basically about you know, just letting yourself shine and, you know, swaying the breeze. That's what I'm hearing. I'm seeing like all these flowers going, la, la, la. <laughs> that is so cute. Okay. So I'm also hearing it's about your creative side. It's like, you're so creative and artistic. Um, like people love that about you. And if that's, if that's the part of you that you want to express, then go for it. Okay. So I'm also hearing the letter A, J, Q, U, and K. So that could be, um, the name of something, or someone or something like that okay so the next person you're going to meet or people around you pisces virgo and there's a pluto energy here as well so someone or okay you've had a lot of really strong changes in your relationships and this is everyone friendships family everything um there's no drama anymore and it's kind of weirding you out you're like you're waiting for the drama there's no more drama basically you've cleared it all out and you're now moving more towards a more positive state of mind a more positive way of experiencing your experiencing your life and i feel like if there's any tension between any, anyone you're basically just expressing it straight away Okay, so solar flares activate. A lot of you guys could be feeling the solar flares, could be getting a lot of headaches, could be getting a lot of like, I'm hearing brain pain. <laughs> so funny, brain pain. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, you're getting a lot of brain pain. A lot of you guys are being fucking activated and I'm talking very strong feminine energy, very strong masculine energy, mainly a feminine though. This is for my males and females. Like a lot, you guys are really being triggered into your feminine energy, like really being connected to your heart chakra, no judgment, authentic love for yourself. And you could be manifesting a Pisces or a Virgo because of that, because you're basically, you're now, oh, I'm feeling this lovely energy about like aligning with someone. 
So it's like somebody's either, you're like, this is you and this is somebody else. Like you kind of, you haven't been, you haven't actually met each other yet. You're like away from each other. But all the work you're doing is like aligning you both together so you can finally like meet and come together. And that's kind of what I'm seeing. Um, so it's like a dance move. <laughs> it's like both of you are like aligning with each other. Um, finally, basically, like you're finally aligning because you're ready for that step up in your romantic life. Um, I'm also feeling a lot of you guys have a massive rebirth going on around basically how you're experiencing change. A lot of you guys are getting are getting really comfortable with, with change, which is really, really good. And I also see that your career is leading you towards a partnership because your lifestyle is changing because whatever career you have, that's your lifestyle. So say if you work at a nine to five office, you are probably, you know, wearing a lot of like um, work clothes, you're, you know, probably, I don't know, maybe not looking after yourself as much because you don't have a lot of time. But if you're doing a job where you enjoy it more or you're doing a job that what is working out in nature, it's like you're able to really like change around it. So you're probably wearing more comfy clothes. You're probably eating a bit better. You know, it's like whatever your career is, that's your lifestyle. So your person is within that lifestyle. Whatever you're doing now or are going to head towards, that's going to be the lifestyle that you're going to have with this person. And your person I'm hearing is going to sing to you. So if you have, if you're single or, you know, in a relationship with someone who is a musician or loves music, I'm hearing like somebody singing to you. Like somebody's really, I want to say obsessed with you, but in the healthy way, like they love your energy. They love, they just love you. Like it's just, they just love you. That's it. Um, so that is your reading guys. I hope that resonates with you. Um, have a lovely day. Also, the last thing I'm hearing is like, you are going to get a moon tattoo or if someone has a moon tattoo or the moons are like going to be really significant. Oh, I also forgot to pull you guys months of the year. Okay, let's get you a couple of months of the year. Anything that is specific for group number two, please. Pick up on February. So let's see what we get. Okay, we have May. This one. No. Okay, we haven't got February today. So we have May, November and July. So thank you so much for watching. If you'd like a private reading, all that information is down below along with my crystal shop. I've got some beautiful crystal babies on my shop at the moment. I'm obsessed with them. They're gorgeous. This is one of the pieces that I have on there at the moment of filming this video. These are beautiful smoky quartz towers. I'm obsessed. I love them. They're so pretty. So have a lovely, lovely day and I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Hello, good number three. Let's get started with your reading. So you guys chose the amethyst double terminated crystal. So let's get started with your reading. Let's see what love messages are here for you today. So we have the page of wands, the king of wands and the shadow work card. So uh, in every group, you guys got a king and a, um, a card from the deck, like not a tarot card. So this is really, really interesting. So we have the King of Wands, Page of Wands and Shadow Work. So for a lot of you guys, there's a sense of kind of like not getting permission anymore, like getting permission from yourself to do things. And I feel like this is kind of like you giving away your power, kind of like, you know, the kind of Oliver situation where it's like, please sir, can I have some more? That's like asking for permission for you guys. You're no longer asking permission to um, basically express yourself in in connection with anyone and in terms of your love life I feel like you guys have definitely done a lot of shadow work um, all the shadow work you've been doing I'm hearing like clapping I'm hearing somebody going like yay woo because a lot of you guys like shadow work is not comfortable it's not something that you know we enjoy doing <laughs> if you've ever done shadow work it's not fun but the best thing about it is it helps us to really really explore our authentic selves and really get rid of a lot of the shadows that have been put on us or we've taken a hold of. Because a lot of the time is, especially if you're an empath or you're somebody who really takes on a lot of emotions from others, you will, you know, possibly subconsciously take on other people's shadows, especially from parents um, or parental parental figures. So you guys, these shadows are not yours to carry anymore. And you're definitely coming out of this old phase, which is really nice. So when you are in a relationship, as you are single, when you do come into a relationship with someone um, that you really, really love, oh, the death card, yes. Um, and a Scorpio, I love that card. When it comes out, I get really excited because um, <clears throat> change is on its way, bitch. Um, okay, so what was I saying? <laughs> I've totally forgotten. Oh my God, my brain is like mush sometimes. What was I saying? I honestly can't remember. Shadow work, I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna move on. All right, so the 10 of wands in reverse, this is really, really great because what I'm feeling 
is it's not in reverse it's actually upright <laughs> so the ten of wands is basically you no longer kind of being entrapped or being feeling trapped by people feeling trapped by anyone you're just kind of like living your life i'm picking up this like being really conscious of how people treat you um so i'm also feeling yeah like parental figures that's it like taking on shadow work shadows from parental figures or people who are very close to you so i'm picking up you're no longer the child so what i'm feeling is you're no longer the victim you're no longer like at the expense of sh your shadows or um like your par parents shadows or anything like that i'm picking up on like a really like kind of clumpy thick energy a lot of you guys hold on to because it feels like safer that way to kind of hold on to it so what i'm seeing is the person you're going to meet is going to really appreciate you and see you as you are like it's not going to be a reflecting or not pro reflecting and projecting well i guess reflecting as well but projecting their crap onto you like they're not doing that um and it's because you guys are really like showing up your power like you're kind of like really showing it to the person you're going to be with so i'm feeling like with the death card and the ten of swords we have another ten so there's a massive sense of completion the knight of wands i'm actually going to get a clarifying card for that because i'm picking up it's just like there's something else that's just after it okay so you have the hierophant underneath which is really nice so it's basically i'm hearing you have ev you have everything at your disposal knight of wands the magician the chariot justice beautiful so we've got some lovely and major arcana so what this is showing me is you're going into a new life um, with someone i do feel like the person you could be with or around or the person you are creating you know more of in your life is fiery energy so being really passionate um, there could be a fire sign that's coming towards you um, and i feel like with the magician and the chariot this is all about you guys not really giving a shit about what people think which is really great um and, and it doesn't matter about what people think either like it's just their opinion it doesn't it's not fact so justice i'm feeling it, it just feels really really powerful this feels like a really strong woman who is just really in her feminine energy it just is very very attractive because she's not really caring about what other people think which is really really nice okay so with the king of wands and shadow work this is you this is your person and this is you this is the kind of things that you're doing you're doing a lot of stuff to do with the underworld like things you don't want to look at um a lot of subconscious uh 12th house stuff you've kind of been working on that recently a lot of to do with your sensitive side and your not sensitive yet yeah, i guess so but like spiritual side that sort of thing and your person is kind of like inching closer and closer to you it's kind of like this is you but you, you can't see your person you're like looking away and this your person's kind of like inching closer and closer to you it's like come on baby let me whisper in your ear <laughs> oh my god that song i love that song <laughs> that's like my whole song that's like my um get down dirty song <laughs> um so <laughs> okay i don't know what i'm saying guys honestly i just say whatever comes out of my mouth my intuition is hilarious sometimes so with the shadow work and the king of wands it's literally your person that you're going to attract is really funny and fun um and it you're okay this is a really good message you guys are going to be very sexually expressive with your next relationship and there's no kind of taboo energy like oh no you can't do that or no i don't really want to do that and there was like i feel like a lot of you guys you've had relationships um or connections with people and the the sexual side the intimate side has been lacking as fuck like really really lacking um there might have been like you know issues with sexual energy there may have been like addictions um possibly like cheating codependency stuff like that and it basically taught you to come into your power especially to do with your intimate side um, i won't go too much into it because this is an amazing 18 plus reading but what i'm seeing is you are so effing comfortable with being yourself like this is you at this moment i feel um really just freeing up your energy so you don't have to like take on other people's stuff which is really nice and when you come into a partnership with somebody it's going to be scary at first because there's going to be this new type of intimacy but it's going to free you up like it's going you're going to feel like chains are coming off of you i'm hearing like you're worried about what this person thinks of you but at the end of the day if this person doesn't if this person thinks about you in a, in a bad way and they don't deserve to be in your life like somebody should love you for all of you not just like parts of you that they like you know it's not like pick and choose and if they do pick and choose then they need to go bye bye you know you're not here to control the relationship like you are here to experience a relationship um with yourself and with others and if people judge you on that people judge you on who you are and then they don't deserve to be in your life like they you should be able to authentically express yourself especially intimately like there's no kind of i'm picking up on a lot of 
like physical stuff like I feel like a lot of you guys are either really insecure about your body you're scared of sharing your body uh, you're scared of like there's parts you don't like about your body you're scared of like people judging you there's this sense of like being intimate and you know you're kind of scared of going down that route all of these things I'm hearing just don't matter because the person you're going to be with is going to love you for for whoever you for however you present yourself like however you are if you're not being authentic they're not going to recognize who you are so it's like the more you hide yourself the more you're shaming who you are you know it's it does take a lot of practice to be authentic because especially if you're used to kind of people pleasing or you're used to you know hiding it does take some practice but you're going to get there it's going to be fine so the bigger picture here we go take a step back and gather your thoughts and feelings i'm hearing don't control other people and their thoughts like you can't control it you know do not worry about it people like we worry so much about ourselves we don't need to worry about other people as well like, that's just going to cause more stress so we have the field mouse success believing yourself and dare to dream big i'm picking up like a message some of you guys are going to remove a tattoo that's quite a, that's quite a significant thing possibly it's like a, an, I don't know, an image of your ex or like a, a date that was like important to you but now it's not it's like you're now letting go of something by literally like shaving off like a layer you know or even like I don't know shaving your arms or something it's something to do with your arms and like getting rid of the past something like that uh, we have grounding ground your energies and emotions deep into the earth and then we have trust approach the situation with a light heart <clears throat> so any kind of like <clears throat> sorry guys my throat is really going for it um any kind of issues you've had in the past they're kind of all leaving now which is really nice clean slate for you guys which is beautiful lovely what is your soul calling you to do i think this came up in group number two's um message as well so a lot of you guys i'm feeling that a lot of you guys are going to pick two groups for this for this video so that's really cool I'm picking up you are the mouse, but the mouse is as mighty as an elephant. And that's really funny. Oh my God, I didn't realize we had an elephant there too. Like in like cartoons, the mouse is like the elephant's always scared of the mouse. It's like, don't be scared of you presenting yourself. Like just because I'm hearing small but mighty, like your energy is the mouse. That like maybe you're quite quiet, you're quite shy, you're quite introverted. There's so much fucking power in that. You're inward, you are deep, you are artistic. That is something fucking beautiful and sexy as well. A lot of people love that. Um, and that's what people love about you. A lot of you guys are establishing really, really good boundaries. Um, some of you guys are really focusing on boundaries, so it might take a bit of time or practice with those boundaries. But it says where you need to establish better boundaries. Um, so if you guys need to establish better boundaries, this is your sign to do so as well. Okay. Not giving away your um, energy, like not giving access to everyone and everything. Uh, I'm hearing, do you have access? <laughs> that question, do you have access? Um, okay, so yes, just say yes. So this is basically saying, don't care about what people think about you. Um, there's a sense of just letting yourself be free, letting yourself be just more content with like not worrying about what people think. And this just say yes card, it just feels really great. It feels like say yes to more opportunities. Don't be afraid to express yourself. Like people love you for who you are. What has made you think that you are not worthy? You know, a lot of it is to do with shame. Like a lot of parents shame their children like even whether it be like um like passive aggressively or it might be like a thing from like the front when you're even younger you know it's there's a lot of shame in families and it's because a lot of us are fucking insecure because society is shit <laughs> and makes you insecure so a lot of our families hold that and it's not fair like it, no one should have to deal with that so the more you go into why am i feeling like this why has this been triggered da, 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 it's really important because it can get you really clear on what you know you, you need to look at so just say yes is showing me that a lot of you guys are needing to just let go of perfectionism around how you're interacting with people you know over worry like overthinking about what people think of you worrying 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 it's not worth it it's not worth the worrying if you start worrying just bring it back to yourself and be like it's okay it's sorted it's not our responsibility you know stop holding on to people's stop holding on to things that are not your responsibility okay you are not you're not here to be responsible for other people other people need to take responsibility and also i'm hearing for a lot of you guys especially those of you who've kind of you know you've kind of fallen in love with people's potential this is about you guys seeing things just as they are and being like that's who they are they're not going to change and it's up to you whether you want to deal with that or want to um, keep that in your life okay Ooh, capricorn lots of structure okay <clears throat> I don't want these okay let's give it a little shuffle so Capricorn I'm feeling like you're letting go of um 
being responsible, like being always the one to take care of people, but also you're uh, kind of revisiting your connection to authority figures. Like you no longer feel scared of authority figures because you know your worth. And there's so much authoritarianism, is that a word? I don't know. Authoritarian energy in society. It's, you know, teachers, then there's the government, and then you get all the crap. So there is a lot of that going around. And at the end of the day, it's just, yeah, it's everywhere. It's meant to make us feel scared and make our, us powerless, and it's not good enough anymore. You know, stepping into your power is so important in this, in this world, even if it's scary. So yeah, a lot of you guys are really letting go of a lot of ways that you've kind of sabotage intimacy for yourself you're no longer being attracted to people who it's a short-term relationship the next person you're going to be with could be a capricorn could have very strong earth sign qualities really stable really educated and i don't even mean just like school i mean like they're really wise um they're really like an old soul they're this is going to come from you being assertive as well and confronting things that you don't want to look at and really healing a lot of your past um, a lot of you guys are healing your connection to health um i'm picking up on doctors because this kind of reminds me of like the health symbol um a lot of you guys are kind of releasing the connection to do with help and i'm picking up this is very specific but some of you guys have maybe like a doctor who uh, like a mother or father who is a doctor or someone who uses that to kind of be controlling could be even a religious aspect or something where they try to like make you a certain way or is are too controlling around your lifestyle so you're letting go of that and that's the authoritarianism as well i don't know if that's a word i'm sorry guys that's not a word but it keeps coming to my brain um and the second house is all about you guys really balancing out your life um and the second house you could also be working on your second house you could have like a really strong connection to your career in the next few months and that could be how you meet someone i mean capricorn is very much like a I mean it's ruled by the 10th house which is to do with career long term goals structure reputation so a lot of the a lot of this energy around self-worth is allowing you to become more confident in your money money section of your life and you're going to bring in more money because you're more confident and i also feel like the person you're going to become is super confident and a lot of people are going to love what you do and what you give to the world because you're really good at it because it's your natural talent. A lot of you guys want to be teachers and I'm hearing just go for it. If that's something you're really passionate about. I mean, I, I would avoid the education system. <laughs> There's a lot of manipulation there. But if you feel fully drawn to it, you're like, Vicky, I want to go for it. Then just go for it. You know, even if it's not like a like a teacher in a school, it could be like a, a teacher of mental health, um, like a therapist or somebody who has a lot of knowledge about something. That is what you're going towards. I'm also hearing maybe even an Etsy shop. It's like you're selling something, but it's helping people with their life, you know, that sort of thing. So we have July, January and August as your months to look out for in your love life. So have a lovely day. My private reading rates are down below along with my crystal shop and I'll speak to you very, very soon. Bye. Hello, group number four. Let's get started with your reading. So you guys chose the Tourmalated Quartz. Oh, I love her. She's lovely. Okay, let's have a look and see what cards you got. <clears throat> so... We have the Three of Swords, the Knights, sorry, no, the King of Cups and the Universe. Lovely. So you guys got the King of Cups. So every group got a king and a um, card that's not of the tarot, but is in the tarot, like the universe. So for you guys, I mean, this could be the world as well. It could actually represent the world. So we have the Three of Swords, a King of Cups and the Universe. Oh, okay. Let's get a couple more cards. Let's see what else we have here. So this is all about your relationship to um, your masculine side and also where your power is being taken away from, well, by men, okay? And this can be, if you're even if you're not attracted to men, um, this can be in friendships as well with men or, you know, can, how you relate to them in work or, you know, however they come up in your life, that sort of thing. Okay. Let's get one more. Right, so there's massive balance being restored for you guys in your love life. A lot of you guys are going to be in a relationship actually quite soon. Um, so get ready because that's going to be great. Um, nine of Wands is all about you guys being okay with being single um, or just having alone time if you're in a relationship. Just like letting yourself be with your own energy. And also I'm hearing, like I say a lot of the time, a relationship is not an end goal. So when you get into a relationship, you do still need to, you know, just look at yourself and discover what you like and what you love. Because if you're in a connection for the rest of your life, you know, you still got to work on yourself, you know. Otherwise, if you don't, then, you know, it could go downhill pretty quickly because you're abandoning yourself, you know. So because you guys got two 
kings, it's really important definitely to focus on your masculine side, how you're asserting yourself, um, how you are getting your needs met, things like that. So your needs, I'm hearing, I'm hearing your needs are really important. I'm hearing you saying that to your person. So this is what I'm feeling. This is very, very simple. We have the Empress and we have the Lover. So a lot of major arcana. There's a lot of big shit shifting happening. So when I say this, it basically means like a lot of the shit that you've been avoiding, a lot of the karmic things that you want changing, it's going to start changing. I'm hearing clean up. So the Three of Swords is basically it's starting. And I feel like this is from the past. This is about... I'd say about a year ago to six months ago, this is kind of like, this is now, you know, in the past. And I feel like you're more confident with, if you, especially if you're into the opposite sex, um, you're into, you're definitely more confident with the opposite sex because you know your worth. So if you ever want to go up to somebody, I'd say just go for it. Um, that's just about your, like your, like I said, your masculine side, your dominant side, part of you, the, the part of you that is going to assert that is, that is what I'm feeling you could do. So I'm seeing you can meet a water sign or an earth sign. That could be your next partner. The next person you're with could have long hair, um, even especially a male, long hair, like I'm putting them in a man bun, putting hair in like a ponytail, whatever. Um, the person you meet is going to be really spiritual. Like it's going to have very strong spiritual, a very strong spiritual connection. Um, and they're very, very authentic, really sexual connection as well. So the Empress and the Lovers, a lot of you guys are going to have a connection with a strong, a strong connection with a same sex friend. And then you're going to meet a partner. Um, it's something to do with basically, con it's, I'm hearing connection. It's like you're learning and leaning into new connections that you never had before. Especially if you guys have been alone for a long time. I hate the word alone because you're never alone. But like, especially if you haven't had any girlfriends or guy friends for a very long time. I'm picking up like years and years. This is because you have needed to reset yourself. Like reset a lot of the trauma that's been put on you. Like you wouldn't have been able to do that if you had a lot of friends around you. Because it would just distract you essentially. So we have the Empress and the Lovers. Especially for those of you who are really like, who really um, are very conscious of your emotions. And really care about others. And are very empathic, very sensitive. It is really hard to do a lot of shadow work if you've got a lot of people around you because you're always thinking about other people, you know, so it's really getting comfortable with being yourself. So I'm hearing with the lovers, you're completely immersed in the connection, like the water around these this couple is so pretty. It's like both of you are so happy with the relationship. And a lot of people won't actually know that you're in a relationship for a while because you won't feel the need to kind of advertise it because it's not important. You know, you don't need to advertise your relationship because if you're happy, you don't, no one needs to know it really. Um, but when you feel fully comfortable, that's when it's going to happen. I'm really focused on the flowers around these, these people. I'm picking up like blooming. Um, a lot of people are going to see you as you are and the friends, the friendships you're going to attract are beautiful. You might even attract um, a friend that is a twin um, or a partner who's a twin. So I'm seeing like you with two people who are, who look the same, um, or you with a partner who is a twin. Um, I'm seeing also it's like twins running your family or something to do with like Gemini energy, uh, or I'm hearing identity. So yeah, and that's, that's really important. So we then have the universe and the hanged man. This is showing me that you don't have to worry about timing. I'm hearing don't stress about timing. That is the last thing the universe wants you to do. Like honestly, do not stress about it. The universe has got it handled, girl. Like obviously meet, meet the universe halfway where you're, you know, looking into your soul and what you love and enjoying your life. But I'm picking up on like the two of cups. It's like balance is really important to you, especially if you've got Libra aspects in your chart you are kind of out of balance a lot because you really care about others. So it can kind of, the, the scales can tip more towards somebody else's favor, like being in somebody else's favor. Favor. So um, this is about you guys being really conscious of where you're putting your energy, where you're putting your thoughts, who you're thinking about. And if you think about someone too much, do some cord cutting because you might be kind of getting like an emotional vampire energy from them. Um, or you might just be overcompensating and you need to kind of bring back your energy. So the king of pentacles, it could be you're going from a water sign to an earth sign. You could have dated previously a water sign and then you're going to attract an earth sign um, or vice versa. But I do feel like you're coming into a more mature relationship with yourself, with others. And the partner you're going to attract is going to be somebody who's really mature. Um, of course, this is mainly aimed at singles. So I'm sorry if I'm not going to have a lot of messages around relationships, those of you in partnerships. But that's just how my readings go a lot of the time. is a lot of the time they're aimed at um, singles or I get a, a lot of messages to do with singles. But... Take it as it resonates, guys. This is a general reading, okay? So I'm picking up on citrine for a lot of you guys. A lot of you guys are working on your solar plexus um, and how you are, yeah, beautiful, being seen, um, where your service is being given. So basically where you are, um, like are you overexerting yourself to help others, which is not good, you know? So that's something you're really leaning on. But you're also extremely loyal. Like you are the dog as an omen. Like your energy is very, like... Um, 
very dog spirit energy. It's very like powerful, really loyal, really fun and cute. And, and people love that about you. If someone doesn't appreciate who you for who you are, then they are literally blind. Like they don't know what they're talking about because at the end of the day, if you are such a genuine, authentic soul, then why would someone not appreciate that about you, you know? Um, so opinions really are very strong with you at the moment. Like you're really learning to like not care about people's opinions, like not having to be liked by everyone. Um, and yeah, let go of limiting beliefs. Be as expansive in your thoughts as your soul is. Like so cute. Yeah, so basically just not sabotaging yourself by thinking really badly about yourself. And then we also have soul tribe. It's safe to be seen. Your soul tribe is going to come into your life and they're going to be super loyal. They're going to be like, uh, kind of weirdly loyal, like weirdly loyal because you're not used to loyalty in your connections because you wouldn't have it any other way. Like you wouldn't want people to be disloyal to you. We don't have nurture. Allow any anxieties and worries to be gently released and offered up to be healed. A lot of you guys are putting a lot of pressure on yourself of being single. Guys, honestly, don't worry about being single. Like it's not, it's not the worst thing in the world, okay? Because at the end of the day, you're single for a reason. You're not in a relationship for a reason. Sometimes you're in a relationship, sometimes you aren't. That's just how it goes. And um, not being in a relationship is actually fucking great. <laughs> because it's really fun to really explore yourself and figure out what you enjoy. And it gets you more comfortable with being by yourself. Because sometimes if you are very sensitive, it's so easy to just surrender to a relationship. Especially if you haven't done the healing work, you know. So we have the ever unfolding rose cracked open. It's happening for you, not to you. You are working through a lot of layers, my girl. I'm hearing my sis, my girl. You are going through a lot of layers and that's okay. Like your love life is not meant to be perfect. Like in terms of your relationships, relationships are not meant to be perfect. You will go through conflicts. You will, you know, your possible like subconscious patterning will come up. Your, you know, the way you handle stuff will come up. It's, it's not unusual to go off the path a little bit. You know, we're human beings, we're allowed to feel things. So you don't have to be in control all the time. Like let people just be as they are. If they have strong opinions, let them have strong opinions. If they don't agree with you, that's okay. You know, things like that. Um, we have don't dim to fit in. How are you dimming your light in order to fit in? This is really important because a lot of you guys have definitely dimmed to fit in and that is that okay. You know, if that's your survival strategy, then that is something just to look at, you know? And maybe it will never go away. But at the end of the day, society is 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 around us. We're in a society to, to dim ourselves, essentially. Like, it's not natural. Societies aren't normal. Um, tribes and communities are normal. So that's why if you, if you if you struggle to kind of get confident, it's okay, society's a pile of shit. <laughs> so it's really difficult to be confident in a society that's constantly there to make you feel like crap so they can profit off of you. And so you can give them money. You know, that's literally how it works. So basically, it's really important for you to just take your time and observe your thoughts. And if something happens and you're like, oh, I should have reacted in that way, that's okay. There's no should have, there's no would have, there's no could have, should have, would have, could have, there's none of that. Like if you react in that way, it's all right, try again. Like maybe do something different the next time. There's no kind of like, I have to do this a certain way. And at the end of the day, if you do kind of, you know, fail or whatever, which you're never failing, you're learning, it's okay. Like there's no sense of perfectionism. You know, you're already perfect the way you are. And if people make you feel like you're imperfect, that's their own trauma, they, they can just fuck off. <laughs> Bye bye. All right, so we have get grounded, empaths, highly sensitive and connect with nature. So a lot of you guys are really feeling like you need nature, girl. Girl, you've got to get in nature. You've got to get in nature, girl. Like you are really like, and I can talk about society, oh, it is not natural. So you got to get in that nature, get your feet in the grass, really hug, you know, hug some trees. Like I am not afraid to say I hug trees. I love being near trees. I just think they're so beautiful. I mean. They provide us with oxygen. They literally help us to live. If we didn't have trees, we wouldn't be here. So we need to love trees more. And the stigma around hugging trees is just so weird. Like if people think hugging trees is weird, girl, if you've got to hug some trees. <laughs> I love that. Just talking about tree hugging in the reading. It's so cute. Okay. Speaking of tree hugging, I'm picking up on like major cancer energy. So if we get cancer, I wouldn't be surprised, but there's definitely some cancer energy that, that's coming towards you. A lot of nurturing motherly energy, which I'm really excited about for you. So we have Virgo, a lot of, um, I'm hearing taking care of your body. Ooh, hi. Scorpio, investigating that perfection, perfectionistic side, especially around artistic visions. Like if you are an artist, you are gonna be most likely quite a perfectionist quite a strong perfectionist and that's okay. You know, that's gonna help you in your artistic um, abilities, but also it's not to let it overrule you. Okay, we have conjunction, transits, Mars. 
Come on, more fourth house all right so there's definitely some assertive people in your family who you live with possibly if you live with your family they're very assertive one person is kind of overruling you don't let that person overrule you there is their opinions it does not matter don't take it on personally as much as you can okay the descendant invitation i feel like a lot of you guys are going to be invited to um really get vulnerable in a kind of different way you've kind of ever had before especially if you guys are going to meet some really beautiful friends um there's definitely this need to be vulnerable in that a lot of you guys this person could be a virgo or a scorpio the next person you're going to meet is probably going to be somebody who's very mars orientated who handles change quite well the person you're going to meet also is going to help you to stop overthinking so if you start overthinking and you're just like oh, blah, blah, this person's very much in their heart so it's going to help you to kind of um smooth things over really well especially if you're very mercurial if you have any virgo or gemini in your chart or if you're somebody who just overthinks a lot most likely you're artistic because most people are think oh, extremely artistic. That's how they express themselves. Um, but the person you're going to meet probably going to be online or is going to be from abroad um, or looks foreign to you. So say if you're very pale, uh, have very light hair, the person you're going to meet is probably going to be slightly tan and have dark hair. You know, they're going to not look like you. Um, and we have, what else we have? Midheaven and we have the ninth house. So I'm picking up that you're exploring your midheaven and working on how you are coming away from family patterning to help you explore. So what I'm picking up on is your um, IC and your MC. So you have your IC, which is your fourth house, your MC, which is your 10th house. Excuse me if this is wrong, but this is how I see it. Um, I see. And I, your IC is your childhood. Your MC is where you're kind of moving towards. It's opposite to your home life. So your career is normally like the opposite to your home life. So what I'm feeling for you guys is look at your fourth house and your 10th house. Your fourth house is how it's shaped your childhood. You know, your personal years is between the first and the sixth house. Those are your personal years. And then seventh to 12th is like later on in life. So um, your first house, um, I'm picking up, it's like you're, you're reworking your first house at the moment. And also your fourth house, like your identity in your family. Um, you're also dealing with your fourth house a lot as well. Your self-care, emotions, your mother, children, things like that. Um, it could be your relationship to your siblings, relationship to your mother figure. And the reason why I'm saying this is because you're basically coming away from family patterns and you're no longer going to, you're not going to give that to your children. Like you're not going to give this trauma to your children, even if you don't want children, you're no longer like expressing that outwardly. Like you're taking responsibility for a lot of the things you've gone through as a child and your MC is really going to be where you're going in life um, and where you're going to, how you're going to express your career, what your career is all about and what you're here to do on this world, on this earth. And the Scorpio energy is really nice. I feel like this is about you going deep and not being scared of the depth. If people are scared of your depth, they are not the right people. Trust me, like, I'm a Scorpio girl. I've been through it. I've been people, people have told me the weirdest crap, like you are too emotional, you're too deep, you're whatever. Like if people don't appreciate your depth, then they can F off, you know? Like if people are so critical about who you are, like if they dare to say things like that, they're not, they're not worth being around. Like they're not nice people. <laughs> like they're just projecting their stuff. So they're not worth being around. So have a lovely day. Um, I do feel like an omen for you guys. Oh, I forgot to get the months. So we'll do months of the year as well. Um, I'm picking up an omen for you guys as roses. Look out for roses and look out for hematite. Um, hematite is something you may need at the moment, especially if you are overthinking. I don't know why, but I'm picking up on Avon. <laughs> Some of you guys might work for Avon or, you know, be experimenting with makeup or something. I just picked up on that really randomly. Or maybe you're doing a new look or cutting your hair or dyeing your hair. So months of the year that could be significant to you are June, March, and November. I'm picking up on Scorpio season as well, so that would be November. So have a lovely, lovely day. My rates and my uh, crystal shop is down below. I hope you have a lovely, lovely day, and I'll speak to you very soon. Bye.